So we are finally at the end of chapter two and this is the last question in this chapter. Hopefully you've enjoyed the content and we'll be moving on to chapter three from now on. I want to say a big thank you to all the channel members who supported this channel throughout and you basically make it a lot easier for me to create these videos. Now on to the question. In today's video, we are going through a classic circuit problem from the Art of Electronics exercise 2.3. We're going to figure out how some precision op amps like OP07 use a clever trick to cancel out input bias current. So if you read data sheets for a lot of op amps or most op amps, you will see that the current at the input terminals is minimal. This circuit, which is one section of a differential amplifier, includes a current mirror and a cascode circuit, which helps to reduce the current needed from our source. So in this video, we're going to go through how it works, but the question itself says several commercially available precision op amps, e.g. the venerable OP07, use the circuit shown in figure 2.98. Figure 2.98 is very similar to what you are looking at on the screen now to cancel input bias current. Only half of the symmetrical input differential amplifier is shown in detail. The other half works the same way. So for the question, we need to explain how the circuit works. There's a clue in there. We need to know Q1 and Q2. So that is basically this one over here and this um, NPN transistor over here are beta matched pairs. And there is another hint that says hint, it's all done with mirrors. But before we get into the detail, I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, PCBWay. If you're building any kind of electronics project, you know how critical it is to have reliable PCBs. PCBWay offers fast prototyping and custom manufacturing services to help bring your designs to life. So whether you're a hobbyist or an engineer, they have everything you need. You can find a link in the description below to get a quote on your next board. They also offer assembly services and 3D printing. So make sure you check them out. And thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. So let's start with the problem. Um, this transistor Q2, the input transistor, needs a certain amount of base current to flow through it in order for it to work. And that base current is obviously determined by the beta and the output current. So that base current is equal to the collector current divided by beta, which is typically 100. Normally, that base current would come straight from the input pin, which is basically our source over here. And that's what basically shows up as input bias current. If you have a very sensitive source that's not able to provide a lot of current, that can cause a massive problem um, when you are designing circuits, especially analog circuits. So what this circuit does is tries to go around it by providing a current into the base that's equal to the current needed to drive it. So it's a very clever circuit. So let me just show you little sections of this schematic. Basically, hopefully you have a better idea of what to research for your question. Now the question itself is very open-ended, so please contribute in the comment section below to add your own um, explanations for how this circuit works and if you think I've missed out anything as well. We have a current mirror. So what that does is that current going down this path is mirrored identically to current going down this path. We have a transistor cascode network over here and these two have a matched beta. So the current gain for both of these is the same. Now the way these two um, transistors are connected, the collector current of this is equal to the emitter current of this which is equal to the collector current from uh, Q1 on this circuit. Now Q1 and Q2 might be swapped over from the um, reference circuit that's on the Art of Electronics, so be careful with that. We are obviously ignoring the base current on this case over here. Now to drive that collector current, which is basically, let's say this current is the same as this current, we're going to have a certain amount of current that's needed over here, going into the base. Now with the help of the current mirror, that current that's flowing into this is mirrored exactly and helps to flow into this base over here. And because these two have the same gain, the current that is needed for this base is going to be the same as well. So all the current that's needed to drive the base of the NPN transistor over here is provided by the current mirror. And that means that there's no current that's needed from the source, reducing our load effects on the source itself and improving accuracy. So if you change the collector current for whatever reason, this transistor will start conducting more collector current, so will this one. So essentially that means that you're going to need more base current going into this NPN transistor. Now this current mirror will basically drive the same amount of current from this side. So we have an active current that's driven into here, and it's basically the same current that's driven into here as well, and cancelling out any current draw from our input signal. 
Now what we can do is look at some voltages on the circuit. So we are back to the circuit that's shown in the auto of electronics. So some of the part numbers or designators might have changed. So firstly, let's look at Q4C, or which is the collector. So this voltage obviously is VE plus two. So Q4 collector is VE plus two volts. Then Q4 base is going to be equal to the collector voltage minus VBE. So Q4 base is equal to VE plus 2 volts minus VBE. So Q3 base is going to be equal to the same voltage as they are connected together. And Q2 base is going to be the same voltage as well. Now the voltage down here on Q2 emitter is going to be VE plus 2 volts minus 2 VBE. Is because we get the first VBE drop from here and then we get the second VBE drop over here. And the Q1 collector voltage is going to be equal to the Q2 emitter. Now this voltage over here, if you look at the base as being close to zero volts, um, is going to be minus 0.6. So then you can basically work backwards from there to calculate all the voltages in this circuit and work out the values for this. So VE plus 2 volts will be about 1.4 volts and you can back calculate all the voltages if you need to. Um, I think what's more important is the current. So obviously Q2 conducts the same current as Q1. So I, IE Q2 is equal to IC of Q1. And I think more importantly, um, IB of Q2 is equal to IB of Q1. And that is thanks to the current mirror that we have set up over here. So any current that's flowing into this base will be flowing into this base. And I've said that multiple times, but that's the key concept on this circuit. Another thing to note over here on this circuit is basically um, the collector voltage of Q1. Now, if you look at this um, step down voltages over here, so this point is fixed. So that is VE point plus two. Let's call that um, 1.4 volts, right? So then this is um, 0 0.7 volt or, yep. So this is 0 0.7 volts. This is 0 0.7 volts minus over here. So that ends up with Q1 collector at zero volts. And that is relatively fixed as well. The only variation you'll get over here is with temperature and that's due to the VBE change and that helps to reduce the early effect around the circuit as well. Now we have covered early effect in a previous question, but essentially early effect in BJTs is where an increase in the collector emitter voltage, so that's basically this voltage over here, causes a increase in the collector current even when the base current is held constant. Now we are holding this voltage and this voltage constant, so we're going to reduce uh, the early effect error. So think of a transistor as having a middle section called the base. So when you increase the voltage across the transistor, which is basically the VCE voltage, the collector emitter voltage, it causes the region inside the transistor, specifically the reverse bias collector base junction, to widen and this widening eats into the physical base, making it effectively narrower. The narrower base is not good for the electrons that are trying to get from the emitter to the collector. It makes it easier for them to get across. And this increase in the number of electrons reaching the collector results in higher collector current. So the early voltage is a parameter that tells you how much this effect happens. So I don't want to go into massive details for the early effect. Obviously check out my other video for that. I think that pretty much covers everything we need to for this video. The question itself is very open-ended. So obviously, you know, there might be a lot more detail you can add to this, but I think as a community, it'd be helpful if you can add more detail in the comment section below and share your thoughts on this video as well. So I want to say a big thank you to the channel members. If you want any of the circuits or projects that I've designed, please send me a comment and I'll make sure to leave you with a link that you can download the projects from. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.